of my other tutorials uh, and that way you can actually set up the, the whole animator but um, there's not much point for that because we're just creating the actual framework so that way you can apply um, these same settings into your own horror um, game alrighty so that's that's looking nice now let's let's create a basic map that we can um, set up into a nice little horror scene and the the main thing with horror games is there's um, jump scares so the first thing we want to do is actually uh, start to set that up so let's just um, first thing let's create a prefab for our player you can just drag that down here so that, um, that way we know it's backed up and let's actually create a save uh, right now let's create a new folder and call this scenes and um, I'm actually going to give you this whole um, project file when we're finished so that way you can um, test it all out um, excluding Playmaker you'll have to get that yourself and let's just call this test scene excellent so let's, uh, let's create some cubes now and let's squish them in and we're actually just gonna quickly model out a little environment and I wanna kind of make the player feel like he's um, being led down a little path and so let's just squeeze this in let's bring this in like there so this is kind of like a little starting alley alright cool now let's bring this in and for planning sake let's try and create a um, like a bottleneck that the player is going to have to get stuck in and of course the bottom at the end of the bottleneck we're going to create a jump scare and let's create a little opening out here let's make that there let's bring this guy in and of course you'd probably get your modelers to actually create your level inside of Maya and then you'd probably import that and it's all been nicely textured for you but this is um, always good just to create like a little previs area uh, that should be alright let's just create something like that alrighty now let's uh, just give it a little playthrough nice all right so we want to create like a trigger box um, in this area um, but first let's create a little bit of ambient lighting to kind of draw the player in that direction um, so let's fix up this directional light to kind of um, hint that there's a pathway there so let's see how that kind of um, shows a bit of light there and we can even bring this down because we're gonna use a lot of um, these uh, area lights which are really nice let's bring this out here um, but uh, the area lights uh, you actually need to, to bake to bake these lights so let's um, let me just show you how this works you don't have to use this method I'll show you a different method in a second because this is quite computer intensive so if you come into here and turn off auto and then click on build it's gonna um, build uh, this out uh, but we don't have any light maps at the moment uh, because of the I don't think it's the environmental lighting I think we need to check in the directional light that's uh, being silly now, sometimes this can be annoying and <laughs> like trying to get it to um to do what you want it to do but uh, nevertheless you can just put it on auto and then do point and let's bring this down and baking let's just make it real time and that's going to give us a nice result 
either way. So you can see that's a bit a bit much. And let's kind of just do some little bit of artistic lighting. Excellent. And of course we don't really have any objects in our in our scene at the moment. We can like maybe pop down a couple of like extra cubes in our our scene just to to see uh, what's actually happening. So we can bring this up and there's like some crates stacked in a corner. You could even like create and so I'll just grab this cube and and bring this up oh, and bring this guy down. And then that could be like a little the light in here. Once we bring that in. And you can change it to to the global or local, depending on which one this is. Alright, so that kind of creates like a, a light. And then you're like, okay, well, there's nothing over here. Uh, and then that, see how that light kind of draws your eye? So, And then you kind of want to create a bit of intrigue. And then we might want the trigger here. We'll put a trigger probably around here. And then we'll create an eye tween um, behind here uh, to create something moving in the distance to kind of uh, freak out the player a little bit. So let's um, let's create a new empty object and let's call it Enviro. And now let's just drag, um, let's highlight all of this and put it into Enviro and then look, it's nice and clean for us. Very good. Oh, and the plane can probably go in there. And the Enviro, that should be very nice. Okay, so that's all sorted. Um, our flashlight, I'm just actually just thinking about it. I might make the range a little bit more. Uh, so that way it looks it looks nice. So it has a nicer fall off. Okay, cool. And we can create a soft shadows so that way. Yeah, that looks nice. Okay. Excellent. So that's looking good. You can even um adjust the color to make it look a little bit uh cooler or um I like I like to, to not have it perfectly white. I actually like to put a little bit of this hint hint of color in, like a, a tungsten. Take the edge off. And if you don't want to see these lines, if you have it enabled, you can actually turn off gizmos. But I like having it on while I'm working so that way I can actually see what's being recasted everywhere. So <laughs> That should be cool. All right, so now let's uh, set up this box, this trigger, empty object, cube, and let's bring this guy down here. And let's scale it up. And you want to make sure that the player can't get around your triggers. <laughs> Otherwise, something it wouldn't be right. <laughs> and then the player's like, oh, well, that wasn't fun. Uh, all right, so let's bring this in here. Excellent. Now let's turn off the mesh renderer and we want to make the trigger is trigger. Um, and let me just give you a quick demo as to why. So with this, um, with the trigger on, you can see I can move through it. If this is off, you can, I'm actually like running into it because it's like it's still acting as a box collider, but the trigger being off, that way we can actually act as a trigger and voila, we can trigger something. So well, wonderful, we'll leave that as that. Let's leave this as the, let's call it the figure trigger. Uh, no no rhyming intended there. And we want to come in, let's create a new FSM. And we want to create a jump, a jump scare. And let's use this, you can actually create a transition, a system event. And on a trigger enter, let's create a new thing and let's actually test this out. So let's press play. All right, so let's walk into it. So once we walk into it, we're going to trigger and then we're going to create that, um, that figure moving across the screen. So let's actually just uh, create, uh, what, what can, <laughs> nothing really looks that scary, but let's create a figure and let's maybe check a a plane 
oh, not a plane, maybe, maybe a cube. 